I just made a video on this Manitou Circus Expert Fork and the reason why it is no longer on my Commensal Absolute and I will be unboxing my new fork for this video which I'm very excited for and um, I will be attempting to fit a gyro on this and since the new fork won't have a cut steer tube I can have more space to put the gyro in there so I'm excited to give that a try and see if it works and if you have any questions about this Manitou Circus Expert, see the video that I just made and hopefully that answers your questions about that and you can always leave me comments below and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, it's January, so I'm not going to be able to ride the fork that I put on other than maybe on my icy driveway. There's a ton of snow outside, it's 20 degrees, it's fat bike weather. Um, it's not dirt jump bike weather at the moment, not here anyway. Without further ado, let's open up this new fork. I've taken over the kids' playroom here to make this video. Don't really do a lot of videos like this, I don't have time, but kids are in virtual school, so. Gives me a couple moments here and there. All right, this box opened up. What do we have here? Cane Creek headset. It's for my gravel bike. I opened up the headset on my gravel bike the other day and it was brown and rusty. I think just from riding salty roads the last few years. And the gravel bike headset, it was an NS Reg Plus. It, this should be, a, this is sealed. That one wasn't, so hopefully this lasts a little longer. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Oh yeah. Marzocchi. Marzocchi, Marzocchi, I never know. I keep saying it both ways. Um, someone should let me know in the comments below how the heck you pronounce this. <laughs> but uh, we'll go with Marzocchi for the sake of this video. Look at that thing. That looks nice. Oh yeah. This is the color of my sweatshirt. That's gonna look nice. Wow, that is beefy. Holy cow. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison to the expert. You can see this is 32 and this is 36. Quite a bit beefier fork. You can see that reverse arch versus the front arch. You can see kind of the distance there. Manitou has some of the most amazing customer service I've ever seen. And they gave me 40% off a new circus fork, uh, even though I got this second hand, but I'm almost 40 years old and I want something that that rides the way I like the way it rides and this front arch I like the way it feels with foot jams better than the reverse arch even though this is doable um, is, is, as I showed you in my last video but I just like the way this feels better and at my age I only got so many years of riding these kind of bikes so I'm gonna ride what feels good that's that's my take on that. The other thing is I twisted the Manitou fork um, and it twisted right on the bridge. This fork here owned by Fox has a magnesium lower and the Manitou forks have aluminum lowers and magnesium is just a stronger stronger metal has better uh, properties for torsion and sideways flexing, that kind of thing. And given that I love to do foot jams, ride skate park, I am always putting a little bit of a twist on the fork. I'm not just riding straight off of jumps. If all you do is ride dirt jumps and stuff like that, 
and you ride park, but you're not doing tons and tons of foot jams, Mantu Circus is probably good enough, but for me, I think this will feel better. So, one thing I'm going to miss on the Manitou is the lockout feature because that thing was, the lockout was really good on the Manitou. And I'm hoping that this will be firm enough. Feels, feels nice and tight, feels good, no clicks. So you just have to get an idea of how far you're going and what you like. So for... For this, I can't do click, click, click. It's more like here and then over a little. So that's kind of my initial impressions there. All right, well, let's get this thing on the bike, shall we? Put a little grease down in here. That will keep the fork from creaking. Sometimes you get that creaking sound. Just making sure it's well greased will prevent that from happening. That's usually the fix. Alright, looks pretty good. Put this down. We've got some old gyro parts here. Got the Odyssey gyro. We'll put that on and we're going to use this little trigger lever and that will help just keep the lever out of the way, especially since I'm used to riding without brakes. So. The less of a lever, the better. I think this ca ca type of cable looks the cleanest. We'll use that. And I ordered up this, a new rear cable here, lower. So hopefully it's long enough to fit on the frame. It's a little bit tricky to get these off with the chain tensioners here. I've tried removing these chain tensioners altogether to shorten the rear end of the bike. And it works pretty fine, you, it works pretty well. You can take this out all and bring that axle all the way forward. The problem is you can't run brakes. So if you're gonna run brakes, you have to have this in, otherwise the disc brake rubs on the frame just a little bit. I have an old Tektro Micra Road disc brake here, cable actuated. Uh, usually people use the Avid BB7s, but this is what I have, so we'll see if it works. Putting on some ski straps here to get the cable length that I think I will need. So, it's about right there. You can use the brake lever, but I'm just gonna push this to squeeze the disc, and that will help center it. That's a pretty good amount of pull there. So we've got the lower cable pretty well fitted. Now it's time for the upper cable. Well, after multiple attempts to get this thing to work, I just could not. So, you know, these gyro tabs fit in here, just like that. And I just couldn't get enough reach, you know, with the tab in here, I couldn't get enough reach with the cable. So I tried taking this nut out and putting it on top of this to get that to go a little further. That didn't quite work. Um, it, I mean, it has a nice pull, I can feel the pull on the rear brake, but this, this Odyssey gyro just simply does not go far enough down. And when, it, when you actually clip it into here, the, the brake is pulled fully tight. Can't go any further, even when it's loosened up in the back. So in all reality, to run an Odyssey gyro, you need the, you probably just have to run it upside down, you know, with one of the, the brakes from green or one of the gyro tabs from green bicycles out of Europe, or might just have to run a tidal gyro. So no matter which way, no matter which way I tried to run this thing, it just, would not reach um, this cable here. I tried every way I can think of. So if someone else can make a video of fitting an Odyssey gyro to the uh, Commensal Absolute, I would be very happy about that. 
Show me how. <laughs> so what I'll do is, and I cut the fork here with a pipe cutter and I'm gonna leave enough space to uh, be able to put a gyro in the future should I uh, get the, uh, the right parts for that. So that's where, we're, that's where I'm at right now with that. So I'm gonna take everything back off now and just set this back up the way it was, but with the new fork. And then we'll see how it feels to do a couple foot jams in the driveway, a couple 180s, depending how icy it is. All right, back to work. I got the new fork on the bike. Looks really nice. This is the uh, rebound and there's a click as it goes around one time. And it's 20, 22 clicks I counted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I'm gonna go right in between until I learn how the fork rides and then figure out if I wanna go this way or that way with it. Then right here, this is the firm and open. No clicks there, it's just a nice smooth, it feels good though, it feels firm. And surprisingly, it's pretty much locked out. I put about 100 PSI in the fork here. There's a little chart here on the back. That's the maximum amount. Um, so when it's wide open, you know, it does, does have some spring to it and you run it all the way firm and it actually is pretty, I mean, I'm putting my whole weight on it and it's not moving hardly at all. So that's pretty good. That's impressive. I think I'm going to plan to run it just off of firm. So it moves a little bit, not much. Probably better for the fork to not have it locked out all the time. We'll just give it a little bit. We'll give it a little bit. There's no flex this way at all. It's got that 20 mil axle. So that, that just feels really stiff. I like it. Well, let's see how it feels to uh, put my foot in that front tire, in that arch. I'm excited, it's been a while. I like when you have the arch on the front, I can get my whole foot and just rest my whole foot and just stand on the front wheel. And that's what it feels like on a quarter pipe too. You know, I feel a lot more comfortable when I just have my whole foot just standing on the wheel. That way I don't fall back in, I choose to go back in. Big difference. It feels real good. It feels comfortable, predictable. Um, once I can ride more than once a month here and the snow melts away, I'll be excited to put this uh, fork to the test a little further. So hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
and uh, I'll try to get a review of this fork maybe in six months or a year from now. So any questions, just put them in the comments right below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks again.